Greetings, I'm the professor and welcome to another Hobo product review. Now, if you've purchased a power bank, charger, USB hub, or card reader in the past decade, this brand needs no introduction. I've owned at least a dozen of their products over the years and they've always been top notch. They finally decided to join the SoGen revolution by releasing their own power station, the Anchor 521. Let's check it out. The Anchor 521 sports a 256 watt hour lithium iron phosphate or LFP battery rated at 3000 cycles to 80%. In other words, 10 years. As for size and weight, I'll put those numbers at the bottom of the screen and of course I weighed it myself and this was the result. As for the design, it's all ABS plastic with rubberized feet and does have a large color LCD screen that shows all the important information such as battery percent, battery level icon, input output watts, and time remaining. As for the inverter on this, it's a 200 watt pure sign with two outlets. This also sports an MPPT controller capable of 65 watts of solar charging. As for ways to charge, it does come with a 65 watt AC wall charger brick and takes about 4.1 hours. It also comes with a 12 volt car charger which is able to charge the unit at 62 watts in about 4.1 hours. This also has the ability to charge with solar at 65 watts. Again, takes about 4.1 hours. It also can charge from 60 watt power delivery port. The USB-C port on this is bi-directional, so power can come out, power can go in. That takes about 4.3 hours. But it does support simultaneous charging. So if you wanna charge it through the USB port at the same time you do AC charging, car charging, or solar, you can combine these two sources and charge this in as little as two and a half hours from flat. As for 12 volt output types, this only has one 12 volt cigarette lighter style socket, good for 10 amps, and it is regulated at 13.3 volts, which is odd for a lithium iron phosphate battery, but still welcome. As for USB output types, this sports 160 watt USB-C power delivery port, which means you can pull 60 watts out or push 60 watts in, and two basic USB-A ports. As for other features, the Anchor actually has a unique power saving feature. There's a physical switch right here that you flip to what turns blue, and it puts it in power saver mode. And what that does is it powers down the device after a certain amount of time under a certain load. Now, how long or what load? I couldn't find that out. It's not in the manual, it's not on their website, it's not on their Amazon page. So they just say, turn this mode off if you're using a CPAP machine, and I'm gonna tell you, go ahead and turn it off too if you're using a 12 volt fridge, because you certainly don't want it powering off on you in the middle of the night. As for the warranty, Anchor does provide a two year limited manufacturer's warranty on all their products. And of course, I took the Anchor into my secret laboratory where I performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it, including, let's all say it together now, a double-fisted battery capacity test. As for the results of the DC capacity test, it scored 195 watt hours out of 256 or 76% effective. Not the best result and probably the reason for this is the DC regulation circuitry, which does consume some power to keep the voltage steady. This is actually unnecessary with lithium iron phosphate batteries because this type of chemistry holds its voltage all the way down to about 5% charge before the voltage dips below 12 volts. In any case, you get the added benefit with the anchor to be able to draw this all the way down to zero and hold it at a rock solid 13.3 volts, which your fridge will thank you for. The results of the AC battery capacity test, it scored 200 watt hours out of 256 or 78% effective. While a little bit better, this isn't breaking any records, but it's also not unexpected with such a tiny high frequency inverter. The results of the max charge rate test shows that we can push 62 watts into the solar input from 12 to 31 volts. It made no difference what voltage we input, it was the same across the board within a few watts. 
So what about simultaneous charging? Can you charge from two DC sources at once using the port in the back and the power delivery in the front? Well, let's find out. I got the charger ready and I'll stick it in the rear. Giggity. Well, check that out, 114 watts coming in. Right now it says it'll take less than an hour to charge it from 58% to full. So yes, the Anchor does support simultaneous charging. So you can charge it from power delivery and charge it from either wall outlet solar or your car at the same time so if you actually have a solar panel that can do 60 watts power delivery you can plug that in the front and then plug a second solar panel into the back that can do another 60 watts and you can hit pretty close to 120 watts of charging with this that's pretty impressive for something this size you got to remember this is around the same size as a jackery 240 and it's charging at around 120 watts as for the fan noise while charging there was none no matter how much power i pumped into this it never made a sound, so it is absolutely silent when charging. As for the DC output rate check, where we test how much power we can pull out of the 12 volts, Anchor claims it can handle 10 amps from its 12 volt output, so I have it set to 10 amps. You see at the top where it says CC, that's constant current. Go ahead and turn it on. You see the bling lights come on, and it is now pumping out 10 amps at approximately 117, 118 watts. Okay, it turns it up to 11. What we do is if we need that extra push over the cliff, you know what we do? Uh, put it up to 11. 11, exactly. Okay, 128 watts, 11 amps. It's holding 11.8 volts, which is still very good at maximum load. Let's try 11 and a half. Nope. So there's the result. The single 12 volt output on this can supply 11 amps. So this will have no problems at all running a portable 12 volt fridge or any other 12 volt appliance. Pure sine wave check under load. Under a load of about 100 watts, you can see the inverters outputting 111 volts at 60 hertz. The sine wave looks decently good. Now for this next test, we're gonna go ahead and push the inverter to its limit and see what it can do. Now the wattage on this is really, really tiny. It's right there, this number here that says 40. That's the number of watts going out right now. So that's the number we're watching. We're not watching the big 94%. That's the battery. Okay, there we are at 200 watts. Doesn't seem to be any problem there. But 220, I completely lost power. But I didn't hear a beep or anything, so that was interesting. Okay, let's try that again. We're at 215. Yep, right around 215 it conks out. So that's no incredible surprise, 215 watts out of a 200 watt inverter. For this next test, we're gonna do the five minute sustained cooling or what I call the heat soak test. We're gonna run the inverter at its 200 watt limit for at least five minutes to make sure that it doesn't overheat. All right, there we are at 200 watts. We're gonna go ahead and start the timer and see, can we make it five minutes? And there we go, we just passed the five minute mark. Now I am getting quite the inverter noise coming from this little unit. It took several minutes for that fan to really kick on high. I heard it kick on low and now it's on high. Now th the test is gonna be, can I capture this? Cause I have to turn the Bluetti off but the Bluetti is making way too much noise. And then the charger is making way too much noise. 58 decibels. You can really hear that fan going, but then again, I was pushing it to its limit for five minutes. And there it goes, it kicks back on low, which is a lot quieter. Now, what about pass-through charging? Can you charge it while you use it? Sometimes these small models don't support that. I do have it plugged in in the back, so we are charging from AC wall outlet at 62 watts. And I do have a DC source plugged in here. So here we go, we're gonna plug my cell phone in first, the power delivery to make sure that's still working. That ding means it is, it's charging my cell phone. Now what about AC power? Came on, so we got AC power. Now what about DC power? Bada bing, bada bing. Pass through charging works across the board for this small little anchor. This can actually support pass through charging AC, DC and USB and actually charge USB at the same time. So let's go ahead and try that. Okay, here's my power delivery charger from the wall. Plugging it in, it's now charging at 116 watts. Nothing's changed here, nothing's changed there. So yeah, you can dual charge and pass through at the same time. Again, thumbs up. 
Amp interference test. Let's go ahead and power on the AC inverter, see what kind of noise we get out of this small amp. So unfortunately we are getting some interference and just to show you that it is the inverter and not something else in the room, it's perfectly clean when I plug it into the wall. Now the interference on this isn't nearly as bad as I've heard on other small inverters like this. These are obviously high frequency inverters. They have to be because they're small and they're squeezed into a little plastic box. You're not gonna rock out your band on one of these tiny little power stations. These just aren't meant for that kind of work. Ha, you actually thought I forgot about the light on this. No, I didn't. Actually, I was gonna praise Anchor for not putting a silly SOS light on this, but I discovered you press the button once, the light comes on, all right? It's a nice warm light, it's not very bright, but it's there. You press it again and you shut it off. Usually these things, like you press button, it goes fast and faster, then bright and dim and SOS. And I was like, okay, so it's just on and off. That's nice, right? Until I realized if you hold it down, and you know what that's good for. So what do I like about the Anchor 521? The Anchor, as you can see, is actually a pretty sexy product from a pretty sexy brand. I'm glad to see some of the heavy hitters in the industry joining the SoGen revolution. Now, while this Anchor won't power many kitchen appliances, won't run your furnace, your residential refrigerator, or your air conditioner, it can power typical devices like 12 volt fridges, laptops, cameras, modems, routers, hotspots during a blackout. It can handle CPAP machines and charge your MacBook, tablets, and most other USB-C devices from the 60 watt power delivery port. The battery will far outlast most others on the market, and the lantern style light is warm and useful. So what don't I like about the Anchor 521? While I appreciate the dual charging ability of this device, I really would have liked to see it with 100 watt solar charging built in as well as a 100 watt power delivery port. I'm also frankly shocked they didn't include any USB quick charge ports, just the basic old school five volt ports. Now I get it that there's a price war going on with these micro power stations and the cheapest one's gonna get the most sales, but let's hope with future larger models, Anchor will be a little more innovative. Product price. The current price as of Cyber Monday today is only $199, putting it in a class of its own from a major brand name. This is the kind of price you'd expect from made-up brands such as Fast Fish or Banggood. I have no clue how long this price will last, but they did tell me that when this video comes out, it will be $199, and I know that's going to be a limited time. The regular price is $259, so $199 is quite the steal. Those of you watching this video weeks or months from now, don't bother putting in the comments that the price has changed because that's life. Next time, subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified as soon as something like this pops up. As for recommended solar panels, a 60 to 100 watt panel is recommended. Now you can go as high as 120 watts, but beware that the MPPT controller is gonna hard limit it to 65 watts no matter what. And you can't exceed that 31 volts either. So panels over 100 watts really won't help unless you're putting it out on a super cloudy day, in which case it will give you a little bit of a boost. So if you're interested in the Anchor 521 or wanna check out recommended solar panels, the links are in the description of this video below. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. Now I've been wondering why does Anchor call this the 521 when it has a 200 watt inverter and a 256 watt hour battery? Since it's small and cute like a little puppy, they should have called it the biter. Then it would have been the anchor biter. Get it? Hey, if you can do better than that, leave it in the comments. 
RV Golf Guy at Medic Audio Repair, and Ron Roger Cardano, Brian Blue, first John Stacey Soroko.